for dummies. Now in this uh, episode we look at uh, a long ship force control. For the guys of you who have no idea of pipe playing in SLA, I will make a small uh, introduction to pipe playing. So all of you guys who know it already how it works, they can already go a few minutes ahead and see how it works with a long ship force. Because it's not easy to control the vessel on a, when you go on a long ship force control. And the more tricky thing is even to get out of it. There's only a very limited experience on it and uh, we want to use the simulator. But already to tell you now, the simulator which we have here is very limited. We can only simulate a steady pipe force. Not like uh, when the pipe would be on the brake and the tensioner, that the tension will rise and drop uh, when the ship moves. So it's not 100% realistic, but it shows how it will work and also it gives you an aid how to do it. Most of all what I say here was uh, approved or was uh, done also by Konsberg and they came up with the same solution and we look how Konsberg says you should go into long ship force, how you should get out again safely, bumpless and uh, we will see it. Join me in the small uh, presentation. In every pipe play vessel, a section of pipes are being welded together in the so-called firing line or in the main production line. When they are welded, they go further down the production line. As you can see here, the pipe just passing the tensioners, which are uh, quite an important tool and an um, important sensor into the DP system, which we'll look later on. When it's uh, welded, it's being tested here, ultrasonic tested, but can also be X-ray, that there are no defects in the welding. Of course, uh, this open steel has to be protected, therefore uh, coating is applied. But before that can be done, it has to be blasted, grit blasted, so there's uh, no residue on the steel and then the, it's being uh, protected. As you can see here in the production line, it's from a dribble joint uh, pipe vessel, that means they lay one joint is normally 12.2 meters long and the double joint factory brings every time a 24 meter piece in and this one has a dribble joint so every time when they pull a pipe they pull um, 36 meters so it goes here out over the stinger that's on the water and pulled here's a little shallow water but not really shallow ultra shallow water because if it would be let's say below 20 meters water depth then also the stinger have to be shortened and it lands after it after a while on the seabed of course, if uh, the water depth is uh, deeper, the angle will change and there will be more pipe hanging uh, on the ship. So you already see in the water column, the stinger is a uh, quite a big piece which have to be compensated in the drag force. But for that we will uh, look later. The pipe goes nicely in the S form to the seabed, therefore they call it also s -lay. As already mentioned, the tensioners that's uh, in the ship holding the pipe in position and then it goes over a stinger out towards the seabed. Normally, if you're pulling properly in the top tension and the bottom tension are correct, you have a perfect equilibrium with the pipe. If you pull too hard, you can pull it out of the tensioners or if a small diameter pipe even uh, damage the steel integrity of the pipe, basically pull it uh, apart. And also your capability will be limited. But if you pull not enough, that's even worse, because then you buckle the pipe, you overbend it on the bottom, on the um, suck band, or, and also the stinger, you see on the end of the stinger, you, the pipe touches the stinger and can be damaged. So more pulling is always better. To calculate the horizontal force, uh, of the vessel, we have only the measure tension of the tensioner, but there is a, a horizontal and a vertical force in it because the pipe in deep, has been in deep water is just hanging on the ship and increases the draft. And this tension we don't have to compensate. So, in order to find out how much of the measured is really bottom tension, so horizontal force which the vessel is pulled astern, we use this formula. The bottom tension is divided to top tension multiplied by 100, gives us a scale factor. So the 
scale factor is a very important tool to uh, calculate how much the vessel has to pull. The top tension we normally know because it's a measurement, the bottom tension is normally calculated and uh, for each project you will get uh, tables where you can see the calculated bottom tension for each uh, section of the pipe. Here an example. Uh, 25 tons bottom tension, top tension is 50 and it gives us a scale factor of 50%. So 25 divided by 50 multiplied by 100. Normally you would uh, have a perfect uh, uh, equilibrium. You will have a top tension which is measured, then use the scale factor like described before and you get the bottom tension. That multiplied by bias, that's an input, that's not the bias like the trust the bias trust during Stop trusting against each other, that's just an extra ton, uh, tons which you can put in, which trusting ahead, even as the ore is there on, which is the manual input from the operator. You will have the calculated uh, current, uh, they also call the TP current in search, and the wind force in search, and all this together gives the total force. Here, the example again 50 tons, 50% scale factor gives a potential of 25, bias is zero input, you have a calculated current of six, uh, 36 tons. Um, wind is almost nothing, one ton gives us a, a 62 tons with the thrust we have to trust in order to stay nicely in position. If we go in the DP for dummies, my beloved diagram, and we have a look at uh, how the pipeline is uh, being uh, integrated in this diagram, we will have first the problem with the stinger. So the stinger is, uh, need, uh, has a drag model based on the stinger angle and the length of the stinger. There will be the estimated speed will be uh, squared and the estimated uh, speed direction of the model, which the vessel thinks the vessel has, uh, is uh, going into the Stinger drag model. This one goes over a low pass filter and goes back into the model. The, this drag force is uh, then by the vessel known. Then the measurements of the tensioners are coming in. That's a top tension. This one are uh, going to a low pass filter. In some vessel you can set the filter time. But now these are the top tension, means the horizontal and the vertical force. The vertical force we want to take out. Therefore, we have to get to the bottom tension. Um, that is done with the scale factor like described before. And you can also set a minimum bottom tension. That's a force which you can define saying never trust below so much force. That's especially important if you, uh, the measurement fails, the vessel will fall back on this minimum tension and uh, will save you from buckling. This uh, bottom tension, so we're talking here about only the horizontal force, which pulling the vessel astern because of the pipe, only in such direction, therefore, is uh, sent forward as an external force measurement. This one, in on the other hand, is fit forward to the thrust allocation. So there it goes in on the power overload control, goes sends the set points to the thruster that they trust, and that is sent back to the vessel model. Oxidation can occur when the vessel is uh, by heave going upwards, so it pulls on the pipe, so the tension rises. And if it uh, goes down again, it will uh, drop the tension and the tension cannot keep up. So therefore you have like uh, a waveform and uh, can increase and start oscillating. Because then uh, when it goes up, if more tension, the vessel moves ahead. And then when uh, it has uh, less tension, the, the thrust will trust less and the vessel falls again backwards. So this one can be the initial of uh, oscillation. You can some vessel adjust the filter time of the measurements. So if you have a perfect filter time, you will uh, flatten out the input. Another uh, possibility is if the tensioners are on brakes, because if they are on brake, every movement of the vessel will uh, create a lot of change in the uh, measurement. So if you go ahead, the tension rises rapidly. And if you go ba backwards, then it also drops. Here an example how uh, you can detect uh, an oscillation occurring. Therefore, you should always monitor these four things, the thrust or resultant force, the vessel's speed, and the residual force, and the position deviation. There, here in example, you see slowly how the oscillation start to occur and get worse and worse. Therefore, you have time to react and you already know what's going to happen. And therefore, you should monitor this one in ultra shallow water constantly, have this trend open and look at them.
Welcome to the simulator. Uh, what we see here is a pipe laying in Estley. We have currently a top tension of 55.0 tons, a scale factor of 55.0, which means we have a bottom tension of 25 tons. So that's what the DP compensate in uh, the horizontal uh, in search. Plus, we have to trust 62 tons to keep in position to fight against the environment and the residual forces, which is also called DP current. If uh, we would monitor now oscillation, uh, what we don't have in this simulator, we would have, uh, it's not uh, part of the simulator, but then we would go to a long ship force control enabled and apply. Uh, there, now you see here there are two different options. One is the joystick, and uh, the joystick is uh, basically uh, what you can also uh, control with the joystick back and forwards in search direction or you can put it manually and I can fill in uh, the number you want to trust in such direction and uh, go up and down with steps or just use the panel downstairs and fill in the number you want to have. And the joystick is a, a good choice if you want uh, in the, to start with, to stop the vessel going astern and then later on to go over to manual to uh, fine tune the vessel and stabilize it. The recommendation of Konsberg is to leave it on manual and feel that, uh, that this force up constantly when you see it changes during pipe laying or during uh, ultra uh, shallow water pipe laying, update this one constantly uh, so we keep it up to date. So if you go to long ship force, it will be already the correct bottom tension to stay stationary, the, 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 the thrust you need to stay stationary. Uh, of course, you see this uh, small uh, triangle here they are representing the force you have at the moment so they will adjust automatically so if you go now into joystick and accept and enable it even the joystick is now in zero position will trust with uh, 62 tons if you want to trust more you just go give a kick ahead or uh, backwards with the joystick the problem is if you have an oscillation the thrusters are blowing that means uh, they, they go high and they go low and go high and go low so depends where you are enabled the long ship force control it will be either high or too low so in a perfect world like now I can go on joystick and I know it's correct but normally the thrusters are already blowing until you decided to go to a long ship force control therefore manual input is the recommended by Konsberg but um, let's learn from other times the joystick is good to stop the vessel uh, astern so that's what we do now we put the vessel astern on a joystick, when it moves the stern, we give a kick ahead with the joystick. You see also the current is com coming currently from the bow, but it will start uh, uh, coming from the side shortly. So I give a small kick ahead with the joystick. You see the joystick demand is higher. So because you see the vessel moving astern, I don't want to have that because I risk a buckle. So I give a small kick ahead, another kick ahead. The vessel is moving ahead. Okay, she's coming ahead again. The vessel stopped moving astern. I go to say, uh, zero on the joystick, mid zero is uh, 62 tons, that's where we started. I go to manual, and in manual I uh, now try to stabilize the vessel. So I see now, oh, I have a little bit too much thrust, okay, I lower a little bit uh, the manual input in uh, along ship force. As you see already, the current flipped completely over. I can lower even a little bit more, so, because uh, the vessel is still moving ahead. further down to stop the moving ahead so vessel start to slow down okay I go back to 62 tons and that's it vessel stabilized now we will see how it settled you still have some movements but the footprint is not that big oh, of course it was now a little bit too late I have to add a little bit more so so that's uh, how it uh, how it's been done and uh, now you have to play because uh, now it depends if you have the environment compensation on or off in search so if you have it off then you have also to compensate for a wind shift if you have it on then it's uh, you will be still okay
So now I stabilize the vessel around half a meter ahead of the set point. That's good. That means more tension. So I'm not risking uh, to buckle the pipe. Now what next I have to do is uh, going out. Now you think like, oh, I stabilized the vessel, oxidation is stopped, everything fine, everybody happy. But what comes now, it's uh, so if I go out and not changing anything on the setting, now from zero to zero, I switch off the longship force. And now you see the thruster will drop. You trusted with uh, 62 tons. Now you see it drops, only 26, 16, 11 tons and the vessel start uh, moving astern and now we go even minus tons so if you would uh, see the the thruster main you see thrusters even turned around so basically the dp the DP, dpo is now in a worse situation than it was before And also we see it in the post plot, the vessel is uh, going astern and astern. Now, of course, the thrusters start to blow, but we go still astern. So, first we rescued the pipe with a long ship force control. When it was oscillating, stop the oscillating. We are absolutely the hero. Then we think, okay, the vessel is stabilized. I take out the long ship force, and then I land up on this situation. How could that happen from hero to zero? That's, uh, uh, let's uh, see a little bit of theory about a long ship uh, force control. So what exactly happened just before? So we had the top tension of 50 tons, scale factors 50 gives us a bottom tension of 25, we were trusting with bias zero, uh, we had a calculated current in surge direction of uh, 36 tons, a wind of one ton, so we have uh, 62 tons uh, thruster force. But, as, as soon as you're in a long ship force control, the bottom tension is ignored. You can put in 1,000 tons uh, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Bias is ignored. Then the most important, the current in force in search direction goes to zero and the wind force is ignored. Also, except if you tick the box saying environment compensated on, then the wind force will be taken in consideration while you're in a long ship force control. That's okay, because the total thrust force you control with a joystick or with the manual input and stays still 62 tons. But the problem occurs when you want to go out. So if you go back to a long, uh, going out of long ship force control, the, the surge is in, uh, in surge direction of current is still 0 tons. Means you will only thrust now 26 tons instead of the 62. That's the reason why the thruster relax and the vessel falls straight away back and you risk a buckle uh, when you go out of a long ship force control. I know, plenty DPO will say, wait a minute, the current is going to zero, I want to see that and I will show you in the simulator. Welcome to the simulator. So when you go to a long ship force control, before you do that, you the vessel is already instable, that means first thing to do get the people out of the firing line, the main production line, so at least nobody gets hurt and you can only make a material damage if you fail to rescue the pipe. So what we see here is a trend of the residual force, for us important is the surge and also the residual direction. If we activate now the along ship uh, force control, we will see that the uh, residual force in surge is going to zero. At the moment we have uh, minus 37 tons and it's going already down. Also we see the direction, it's at the moment 352 uh, degrees and start also to move. Because in this example there is no wind. If there is no wind and the vessel is not moving, the current will drop to zero. Of course uh, the question arises why uh, the current or the residual force drops anyhow in the first place and why the tension input is ignored. That's because if it would stay there the disruption to the model will be huge and would make the vessel instable. The matter of fact, original this along ship force function uh, was made for cable and pipe laying when there was no tension input. And basically, um, the constant force in the search direction was given by the joystick, and the, the position was done by paying out uh, of the pipe. 
So now in this example, we see already the direction change completely. The, the force, di the residual direction came now completely around. And also the current went to zero, it overshoot a little bit, but is uh, zeroing out uh, shortly. As you can see, it's now 0 0.9, coming slowly back to zero. And that's also, uh, again, because there is no wind in this uh, example and the vessel is kept steady. If there would be vessel movement or a wind, there will be also a slight uh, force in surge acting on the vessel. The residual uh, force will be displayed. So now it zeroes in and stays at zero. Okay, according to Kotzberg, you should and change your top tension input to manual input and correct this one to a value that the bottom tension is as much as you need to have the tr total thrust force again 63 tons. So it means because we have scale factor 50, we have to put in 126 tons, with scale factor 50 gives us 62 tons, so we trust enough to stay in position. That's how, what you do before your transfer and then it's pumpless. I show you the simulator. Welcome back. Now we do a transfer from a long ship force control to back to uh, autopause according to Kunzberg. So first of all, uh, the vessel starts to oscillate. We don't simulate that. We would have it on manual because Kunzberg says you should uh, as operator update this one uh, regularly how much thrust you have. So we have now thrust 62 tons. Uh, we know we have uh, Top tension of 50, 50 tons, scale factors of 50, 50, which is way too low in shallow water, it will be almost 100%, but just to make the numbers more clear, and so it's uh, easier for this example. We have a uh, bottom tension therefore for 25 tons. Now we going into manual along ship force and enable it. As we already know, uh, the West will stay now stationary because he has the same force. But the current will now start to sweep around. As you already see, the current drops. Uh, it's coming from the bow and start moving slowly, slowly uh, from the side. Or can even be go to the stern. Wind is almost nothing, so can uh, be ignored. We have as already small footprint. So normally I would now uh, add some uh, tons to get it back to zero. But I'm quite convinced uh, the DP will handle it. So now the surge current goes completely to zero means uh, the current represented uh, here is only for the sway and the yaw so now we're almost there everything stabilized uh, the oscillation is stopped now it's the tricky part now you want to go out of a long ship force control back to outer dp in such direction so Konsberg says you should um, increase in manual the top tension as much that you have the bottom tension the same what you need to trust to stay in position okay now we know for real we have the bottom tension 25 tons top tension is 50 tons because of the scale factor is only half and we have to trust 62 tons to stay in position in search so in order to stay stationary we need to have 62 tons bottom tension over the scale factor of 50% means we have to have a top tension of 124 tons. So if you put in 124 tons, it uh, looks already really weird, but we apply that 124 tons, scale factor 50 gives you a bottom tension of uh, 62 tons. If I now disable a uh, drawing ship force control, and uh, it will go over pumpless. And let's see if that's happening. So I go out of a long ship force, now I'm back on auto DP. As you see, the vessel is uh, quite stationary. The current did not move, it's still on the wrong position. And there's no back surge, so everything is pumpless. But you just put in 124 tons top tension, while you really, in real life, the tension measures only 50 tons. And now, when you stabilize it, it's no back surge when you go out. 
Now you should lower this 124 tons slowly, slowly, steadily, steadily until you have back to uh, 50, 50 tons where you have been before and you can change over again to measurement. Also, you go only out of a long ship force control when the tensioners are back online, means they are not on a break, so they can freely move because if something goes wrong, at least you can pay in and pay out. And if they're still on a break, you would have stayed away again in oscillation. So that's all here. So now you know how it's done uh, by the Konsberg way. Instead to increase manual the top tension, the most easier effect is just to put the missing tones into bias. So in this case here, we put 37 tones in bias, I guess that's the same bottom tension. Show in the simulator how it works. Okay, welcome back in the simulator. So now we have the same situation. We are still uh, S laying, we have 55.0 tons top tension. Scale factor of 55.0 means gives us a bottom tension of 25 tons. We are still trusting uh, 62 tons to stay in position. The current comes from the bow, almost no wind. So that's what we have now. So we go again, um, normally we stay on manual, we have the DPU update, the number of the force constantly doing a tricky uh, ultra shallow water uh, stretch of the pipe and now we enable the, we start oscillating, okay, I go in a long ship force and stabilize from the other way, so, and uh, be the hero if you manage to do so. Normally try to stay ahead of the set point so more tension is okay, going backwards is not okay uh, because this uh, simulator is limited uh, we cannot simulate oscillations but uh, it's already uh, good to show you uh, the trick how it's been done that you come uh, out of uh, a long ship force so like we said uh, from Kotzberg we want to have the same uh, force which we trust the 62 tons we want to have in the bottom tension Kotzberg said to put that everything in the top tension, increase the top tension as much manually that you have uh, 62 tons uh, thrust. But, much easier way is to use the bias. As we know, bias is not uh, the thrust the bias, which uh, to thrust, the, uh, thrust against each other. This one is the bias in pipe play, means uh, how much tons you want to thrust ahead in such direction, extra. Or we can also put it in minus, but normally it's extra always used. So a plus. So you want to push, you can put in uh, this one in bias. So if you go now out of long ship force control, you have a, a bottom tension of 25 tons, so it would only trust 25 tons in search. But we know we need 62 tons. Because the current you see is completely off, because uh, the, the current in search went completely to zero. Now, in order to do so, we just uh, calculate um, we don't want to have 62 tons we have already 25 bottom tension so we put in in the bias 37 tons so if we put in in bias 37 tons we would after it have a bottom tension of um, 62 uh, tons as you see down there, there's a small filter time uh, which is uh, ramped up slowly. But now we have um, these uh, 62 tons almost reached. So if you go now out of a long ship force control, the vessel stays stationary. The pumpless transfer out of long ship force to outer DP. And that's happened. It's now outer search demand, so in outer DP. And the vessel is uh, steady. And the only thing you have to do now is this. Uh, 37 tons, which you have now too much, uh, lower that slowly, slowly over a quite period of time, take your time, lower that slowly down until you have zero bias and the current will come again from the bow, is it coming then again from the bow and everything is built up again normally. So that is a much easier way than Conspec says and also it's pumpless and uh, much safer, also you have to don't calculate too much. Also the top tension you don't touch, it stays the same even if you have it unmeasured. It will stay unmeasured, you don't have to put in a crazy amount of top tension. Uh, that's uh, the easiest way to go out of long ship force control, pumpless. less. 
Okay, now since we talked now, now all the time about uh, long ship force control, we have to talk also if you don't want to use it. There's only one alternative and that's the joystick in search. If you use the joystick in search, in normal DP now I give already a little joystick ahead. As you see, it comes up here. You can uh, fine tune it also to 62 uh, tons. And when you use the joystick, that means if you want to use joystick, you press double click on auto search and you will be in the search direction uh, on the joystick. That's the advantage is your model in search, the a residual force in search will stay the same. It will not go to zero. But you also don't want to update your model during uh, while you are on a joystick. Therefore, untick the box current update and uh, tick on the environment compensation in search. So, it while you are on a joystick, it will not. Otherwise, you get very crazy high uh, currents. So you untick the current update and you want to have the environment compensation on makes you for you much easier to stabilize the vessel in uh, search on the joystick so uh, now in this uh, case we lined up the, the joystick of course uh, now if you would have really uh, oscillation you would double click auto search and you are in a, a joystick and already trusting what you need to have to stay in position Always when you use uh, these uh, functions on the joystick or auto uh, a long ship force control, always make sure that you have also the other reference system on available, not only the KPOS, also that you have a view on the stinger tip clearance and also on the survey screen, because the model can go really hard off, especially if you have a, a really, really crazy oscillation, uh, the reference system can be rejected and the model can be hugely off. Now you see like this, you can also control the vessel with the real joystick. The model will stay the same and uh, that's how it's done. And if you want to go back in DP, press double click again, auto search and uh, the vessel is uh, settling and that's it. So that's how you can use uh, in case of an oscillation either along ship force control with all the uh, tricks you can uh, go to go out again or just use the joystick press double search and control it uh, this way I hope you like this small presentation about the long ship force control I also hope you could now extend your knowledge about the DP system and that's also stuff you will not find in the manuals and therefore it uh, gives you a more insight of the DP system it's also to help you to stay open-minded, looking forward, read, uh, see what's happening on your vessel, on your system, to get more and more in-depth knowledge of uh, the DP. I hope you liked it, and uh, plenty safe DP hours behind DP. See you next time.